So good morning and welcome to the breakout session, Demoscopy for the Non-Demoscopist. I'm Shala Abraham and I'm so honored and grateful that you've decided to spend your morning with me. I have no relevant conflicts of interest related to, to this presentation. When I was asked to speak on this topic a few months ago, I thought to myself, how the hell am I going to teach you demoscopy in 25 minutes? This is a skill that has taken me almost two years to, to learn and I'm just beginning to get the handle of it myself. So perhaps uh, this talk would be about piquing your interest, seeing if, uh, uh, if, if this is something that is of interest to you so you can, and see if you can introduce it into your practices. So I'm going to begin by making a case for demoscopy. I think that the field of demoscopy is going to be in the hands of family doctors in the next three to five years. And I say that because not a single curriculum in the medical schools can change without the involvement of family doctors. And currently, as we all know, this is not offered in, in medical schools. So if I can convince you that demoscopy can save lives, perhaps we can all be instrumental in bringing it into the medical school curriculum. Benjamin Franklin's famous words were, tell me I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. So one of my first goals today is to give you the most up-to-date information on demoscopy, as well as to involve you in some clinical cases so you can get the concept of demoscopy. My second goal is to help you think outside the ABCD box. This is because the mnemonic ABCD, asymmetry, border, color, and diameter is now evolving, and it has been increasingly recognized that a lot of melanomas do not fill that, uh, uh, fit that ABCD criteria. But I'd like you to hold this thought for the next five to 10 minutes, and I'm going to come back to that later as I move along the presentation. My third goal is to convince you that demoscopy makes for better diagnosticians and um, better insightful clinicians. To me, my dermatoscope is now my stethoscope. And just like I would not listen to somebody's chest without a stethoscope, I would not screen anybody's skin without a dermatoscope. At the end of this presentation, you might do two things. You might say, thank you very much. My eyes are just as good. And my clinical skills are even better. So why bother to learn anything new? Or you might say that learning something new is inconvenient, but then late detection will become a tragedy. So let's begin and see what happens. Good morning. So a dermatoscope is a handheld instrument with a magnifying objective and a light source that removes the surface glare and allows you to see structures that are present underneath the surface of the skin. And demoscopy is analysis of the primary morphology of the microscopic substructures that are not visible to the naked eye. When you look at a lesion with the naked eye, the light is reflected off the skin, and so you're not able to see any structures that are present underneath the surface of the skin. But with the dermatoscope, because the glare is removed, you're able to see the microscopic structures that are present under the surface of the skin. There are two main types of dermatoscopes, polarized and non-polarized. And non-polarized demoscopy is always in contact with the skin, and polarized demoscopy could be contact and non-contact. Uh, most of the currently available dermatoscopes toggle between the two. This is a topic in itself, but suffice to say that polarized demoscopy allows you to see more deeper structures, and non-polarized demoscopy allows you to see more superficial structures. The demoscopic process of evaluating melanocytic lesions is a five-stage process. You note the colors, you identify the structures, you note if, it's, if it has a benign or malignant pattern, you note if it's symmetrical or asymmetrical, and finally you note if it has one of the 10 melanoma-specific melanoma structures for the diagnosis of melanoma. Let's begin with colors. The presence of pigment or melanin at various depths in the skin shows up as a different color when seen with the dermatoscope. For instance, melanin in the stratum corneum appears black, melanin in the epidermis appears brown, blue, black, or gray color is due to melanin in the upper dermis, and white is due to altered collagen seen in the deeper dermis, and red is due to blood vessels. The NPD and PD just stands for polarized demoscopy and non-polarized demoscopy. So, typically benign lesions tend to have less than three colors and malignant lesions tend to have more than three colors. 
The dermoscopic diagnosis requires the recognition of certain structures, and there are many structures that you can see underneath the surface of the skin. You can see network, milia-like cysts, comedo-like openings, globules, streaks, blotches, shiny white lines, and blood vessels. Let's start with the network. Network is a grid-like uh, pattern of hypopigmented holes and pigmented lines, and this forms like a, uh, like a reticular pattern. And this is a dermoscopy image of what a network looks like. A network could be a regular pigmented network, it could be a negative network, and it could be an angulated lines. So again, this is a dermoscopy image of what a regular network looks like. You can see a, uh, the reticular pattern with the hypopigmented holes and the, and the lines, the pigmented lines. A negative network is the exact opposite of a regular network, and it uh, consists of serpentious interconnecting hypopigmented lines that surround pigmented structures and look like sausages. Angulated lines are gray or brown straight lines that meet at angles to form a polygonal zigzag or rhomboidal pattern. This is, a this is a schematic representation of angulated lines and typically implies that the lesion is melanocytic. This is a demoscopy image of angulated lines showing polygons or rhomboidal structures. The other structures that you can see under the dermatoscope are milia-like cysts, and these are keratin plugs that appear white in color. Commodore-like openings are keratin-filled invaginations that look like uh, brown holes. Globules are symmetrical, well-demarcated, round to oval structures, typically more than 0.1 millimeter in diameter, and they constitute a nest of melanocytes in the dermal epidermal junction or in the dermis. And they vary in color from brown, black, blue, white, or red. This is a demoscopy image of a globule, another demoscopy image of a globule. Streaks are of two types, radial streaming and that look like uh, blunt needles and pseudopods that look like tennis rackets. This is a demoscopy image of a streak. A blotch is a large concentration of melanin pigment that is present in the epidermis and um, typically obscures underlying structures. Shiny white lines are due to altered collagen and, as the name implies, appear shiny and white when seen with a, uh, with a dermatoscope. Vessels can appear as red dots, string of pearls, or uh, red oval structures, as in the case of a hemangioma. So we've looked at colors, we've looked at structures, now let's move on to pattern recognition. If you take a look back in time, it was previously thought by some dermatologists in the 1970s and 1980s that a lot of melanomas looked exactly the same. And that led to the development of the ABCD mnemonic that we are now familiar with. However, it has been recognized that a lot of melanomas do not fit that ABCD criteria. And I'm going to illustrate this with the next four or five slides. Lichen planus-like keratosis. This is a completely benign condition, but if you were to apply your ABCD rule with your naked eye, you would probably diagnose this as a melanoma. What about seborrheic keratosis? Would you be concerned if you saw this patient or this lesion in your office? Malignant melanoma, if you were to apply your ABCD rule, you would probably diagnose this as a melanoma. And here are all of these lesions again. To me, they all look like melanomas. The other issue is that early nodular melanomas and melanomas that are less than 0.1 millimeter in diameter lack the ABCD criteria. So the question is, how can I differentiate between the obviously benign lesions and the malignant lesions with my naked eye? And that leads to pattern recognition. Initially, when you start doing demoscopy, everything will look the same. But as you get more and more experienced, you'll start to recognize certain patterns that will allow you to differentiate between the benign and the malignant lesions. So demoscopy has enhanced our ability to recognize different structures and features of lesions, and this is called pattern recognition. For instance, this is a pattern of globules seen in benign lesions. This is a pattern of globules seen in malignant lesions and is highly suggestive of a basal cell cancer. The beauty in the B sign implies that benign nevi display one of the 11 recurrent dermoscopic patterns that fit our definitions of beauty in terms of their color, their structure, and their symmetry. 
and these are the different benign patterns seen in different patterns seen in benign lesions. The beast of the melanoma deviates from the benign pattern and does not display uh, the definitions of beauty in terms of their color, structure, and symmetry. In other words, there is a lot of chaos in this lesion. And these are the different uh, malignant patterns seen in mel melanomas. So we've looked at colors, we've looked at structures, we've looked at pattern, and now let's move on to symmetry. Symmetry means the distribution of colors and structures on either side of the axis to produce a mirror image. This does not refer to the shape of the lesion, and I'm going to come, to, come back to that in a few minutes. So benign lesions tend to have biaxial or monoaxial symmetry, which basically means that no matter how you bisect it, it's always a mirror image. Asymmetry means the distribution of colors and structures on either side of the axis where there is no mirror image. And malignant lesions tend to have biaxial asymmetry. The important point I want to make here is that you can have a perfectly symmetrical shape, but an asymmetry of pattern. So the lesion on your left has a completely uh, normal symmetrical shape, but there's asymmetry of pattern. So dermoscopically, this would be an asymmetric lesion. On the other hand, this, the lesion on the right has an asymmetrical shape but complete symmetry of pattern and therefore dermoscopically this would be a, a symmetric lesion. The, another example is this slide. This slide has 17 melanomas but out of the 17 melanomas, 11 of them have a completely symmetrical shape. Scary, isn't it? So the teaching point is do not uh, judge a book always by the ABCD criteria. I'm going to move on to the melanoma-specific structures. There are 10 melanoma-specific structures that will allow you to differentiate between the benign and the malignant lesions, and I'm going to explain a few. A network is a melanoma-specific structure, but in the case of a melanoma, it tends to be atypical, and in case of a benign lesion, it tends to be typical. A globule is a melanoma-specific structure, but in the case of a melanoma, it tends to be atypical and irregular. In the case of a nevus, it tends to be regular and typical. A streak is a melanoma-specific structure, tends to be peripheral and focal in a melanoma, and regular in a nevus. A blotch is a melanoma-specific structure, tends to be atypical and irregular in a melanoma, and benign in a nevus. So any melanocytic lesion on any anatomical site that displays one of the 10 melanoma-specific structures should be viewed with suspicion. So how do we use dermoscopy to evaluate melanocytic neoplasms? This takes us to the two-step algorithm, which forms a fundamental of dermoscopy. The two-step algorithm is based on the premise that all lesions should first be classified as melanocytic and non-melanocytic. Once you establish that it's melanocytic, you have to decide whether it's benign or malignant, and if it's non-melanocytic, is it benign or malignant? So what is melanocytic? It implies that the lesion is arising from a melanocyte. And if you look at the structure of the skin, there is one melanocyte for every 40 keratinocytes, and the melanocytes basically give melanin to the keratinocytes. Other structures in the skin, like sebaceous glands, blood vessels, a collagen, um, basal cells, squamous cells are considered to be non-melanocytic. So if you look at a lesion, how do you decide that this is a melanocytic tumor? In order for it to be called a melanocytic tumor, four criteria needs to be present. It needs to have a network, it needs to have an aggregated or a peripheral rim of globules, it needs to have streaks, and it needs to have a homogeneous blue pigment. Network, globules, streaks, homogeneous blue pigment. If it has one of these lesions, then you, and you decide that it's melanocytic, then you have to decide whether it's benign or whether it's malignant. So is this lesion melanocytic? Yes, because it has a network. But in the case of a melanoma, the network is atypical, and in the case of a benign nevus, it tends to be typical. Is this lesion melanocytic? Yes, because it has a streak, but the streaks are peripheral or focal in a melanoma, and tends to be regular in a benign lesion. <coughs> Sorry, if it does not have any uh, of these features, then it must be non-melanocytic. And if it's non-melanocytic, is it benign or is it malignant? 
If it's benign, then it could, there could be four possibilities. It could be a dermatofibroma, a seborrheic keratosis, a clear, uh, hemangioma, or a clear cell acanthoma in that order of diagnosis. And if it's a malignant lesion, is it a basal cell cancer or is it a squamous cell cancer? This is what a non-melanocytic dermatofibroma looks like under the dermatoscope. This is what a non-melanocytic basal cell cancer looks like under the dermatoscope. You can see these arborizing vessels and leaf-like structures that are highly suggestive of a basal cell cancer. A non-melanocytic squamous cell cancer looks like this. It often has a strawberry pattern with hairpin vessels or vessels as dots. Seborrheic keratosis looks like this under the dermatoscope. It has this cribriform pattern or uh, finger-like projections, milia-like cysts, and commodore-like openings. Hemangioma can look like this under the dermatoscope, often has these lacunae that are red in color separated by septa. And finally, a clear cell acanthoma, which is a benign pink tumor composed of clear cells, often seen on the sun-exposed areas that looks like a string of pearls. So let's put all of this together and look at some clinical cases. Case one is a 50-year-old woman who presents with an isolated pigmented lesion on the back. Dermoscopically, this is what it looks like. What structures do we see? In this case, we see a uniform network, and therefore this is a melanocytic lesion. How many colors are present? Here, we see two colors, light brown and slightly dark brown. Is it symmetrical or asymmetrical? So the, even though the shape is asymmetrical, dermoscopically, it's a symmetrical lesion. Does it have any one of the 10 melanoma-specific structures for the diagnosis of melanoma? No, because it has a typical network. Benign or malignant? Benign. Case two is a 42-year-old man who has an enlarging pigmented lesion on his back. Dermoscopically, this is what it looks like. How many structures are present? Two structures. You see a network and you see a peripheral rim of globules. Therefore, this is a melanocytic lesion. How many colors? Here again, we see two colors, light brown and dark brown. Is it symmetrical or asymmetrical? Dermoscopically, this is a symmetrical lesion because no matter how you bisect it, it is a mirror image. Does it have one of the 10 melanoma specific structures for the diagnosis of melanoma? No, it has a typical network and pigmented uh, peripheral globules. Benign or malignant? Benign. Case 3 is a 54-year-old man with an asymmetrical light and dark brown papule on his lower back. This is what it looks like dermoscopically. How many structures? Here we see three structures. We see irregular peripheral streaks, we see a negative network, and we see an atypical or a non-uniform network. Therefore, it's considered to be melanocytic. How many colors are present? Here we see three colors, light brown, dark brown, and blue-gray. Is it symmetrical or non-symmetrical? There is no symmetry of pattern and there is no symmetry of shape, and therefore, dermoscopically, this is an asymmetrical lesion. Does it have one of the 10 melanoma-specific structures for the diagnosis of melanoma? Yes, it has irregular peripheral streaks, it has a negative network and an atypical network. Benign or malignant? Malignant. Almost done. So dermoscopy will help to differentiate melanocytic from non-melanocytic lesions. I'm happy to report that the dermoscopy two-step algorithm I've just presented to you is now downloadable on the App Store. And um, you can see all the structures. You can go through some clinical cases. And it'll take you to the, uh, through this algorithm in a stepwise fashion. Dermoscopy will help differentiate benign from malignant lesions. Remember that dermoscopy is not difficult because the bulk of what you will see will be benign. And with experience, you will be able to identify these benign lesions quite, or recognize these uh, benign lesions quite rapidly. Dermoscopy will confirm your naked eye diagnosis, and therefore you will be able to correlate your clinical findings with your dermoscopic findings. So on the left is your clinical findings, and on the right is, are your dermoscopic findings. Dermoscopy will improve your benign to malignant biopsy ratio and avoid unnecessary biopsies. Initially, when you start doing dermoscopy, your benign to malignant biopsy ratio will be high, but it will plummet by year two. 
and this will come with experience. As you get more and more experienced, your threshold for excision will become less or lower, and hopefully you will avoid giving this to your patients with keloid, scarring, pain and suffering, and a lot of morbidity. Dermoscopy will help isolate, it, isolate suspicious foci within the lesions, so there will be a clinical dermoscopy and a pathology correlation. In other words, dermoscopy will bridge the gap between your clinical findings and your histopathological findings. Dermoscopy will help in the early detection of skin cancer, and this is all that we care about. An early detection of skin cancer will lead to improved survival. And once you have a diagnosis, you can actually manage the patient with the proper skin cancer triage. You can reassure them, you can biopsy them, you can refer them, or you can follow them along. In 1970s, the overall survival for malignant melanoma was less than 60%. Springing forward to 2015, this, ha this has increased to 90% or 91%. So what accounts for this phenomenal increase in overall survival? Some of it uh, has been our teaching to think within the ABCD box. But now it's time to think outside the ABCD box. Because if you only look at lesions that are of clinical concern to you, then dermoscopy will only improve your specificity. So you, you will be able to pick up the ugly ducklings and the uh, outlier lesions. But if you want to improve your sensitivity in detecting skin cancer, you need to look at lesions that are not of clinical concern to you. And finally, dermoscopy will help in the surveillance of patients with many nevi. And much as we hate patients bringing in their selfies, in dermoscopy we need to encourage this. In fact, there is an app called Molescope that, that is downloadable on the App Store that allows patients to monitor their own nevi and bring it to our attention if it changes. So a conclusion is a place where you get tired of thinking. So in conclusion, my hope is that you found this uh, course educational and fun and that you will be the future torchbearers of bringing demoscopy into the medical school curriculum. Thank you very much for your attention.